In this section of video, we will take you step by step through the process of constructing a T-bar snare. The T-bar snare is an ancient trap used to hunt small to mid-sized game. This method has been a favorite amongst trappers not only because of the ease and therefore the speed with which it can be built, allowing more traps to be set throughout the day, giving you a greater chance of catching game, but also because of its sheer effectiveness. To construct the T-bar, you will need two vertical sticks approximately 24 to 32 inches in height, one horizontal crossbar approximately 16 to 24 inches in length, and of similar to slightly smaller circumference than the vertical poles on which it will be hinged, an approximately 3 inch trigger stick slightly larger around than the crossbar, a spring pole with enough height to lift the animal well into the air, enough flexibility to bend without breaking, and enough springing force to easily lift the animal and tighten the snare line. Now, you should know that these dimensions are just a start and after you master the T-bar snare, you will alter them to reflect your own needs. Now to get started. The first thing you must know is where to place your trap. Simply will not do to place your trap anywhere in the wilderness hoping to catch an animal. Whenever possible, place your traps along visible animal trails that show signs of recent use by the game you are hunting. A natural choke point like this one, surrounded by vegetation, will afford an easy opportunity to guide the animal into your snare, as well as gather the materials needed to make the trap. The best place to find wild game is near its water source. As such, we will perform this demonstration along a well-used trail leading directly towards such a source. Once you decide upon a location for your trap, you must find a spring pole. Although you may cut and import one from another area if needed, it is always best to use a branch growing alongside the trail. Be sure the tip of your spring pole is centered over the location of the snare. This will ensure even tension on the trap. Here's a couple of tips on the spring pole. First, you may find a spring pole that you think is perfect, except it doesn't provide quite enough spring. You may, however, be able simply to trim the end of the branch, eliminating excess weight and resistance, allowing for all the spring you need. Second, the T-bar is a sensitive trap. The branches around your spring pole could easily set it off if it is a windy day. Therefore, you may want to clear any infringing branches and, if possible, use them to construct the remaining portion of the snare. Next, you will gather the materials for the rest of the trap will likely consist of only one type of tree or brush and your cordage. There is no need to gather different types of materials for different parts of the trap. The vertical poles will be placed directly across from one another, far enough apart to easily allow your game to walk through. They should be buried and or held by enough stones to sufficiently hold the snare pole when under full tension. Now find yourself a crossbar. The crossbar should be long enough to span the entire entrance of the trap and slightly smaller around than the vertical poles on which it will be hinged. Measure the width of your crossbar against the vertical bars and mark the vertical bars. Use your marks as a guide to carve a flat-backed C-shaped notch in each pole in which the crossbar will rest. These notches are easily carved by sawing straight down at the borders then sawing inward on an angle toward the bottom of your straight line, like so, essentially carving a series of seven shapes and clearing out the material along the way, leaving you with your flat-backed C-shape. The notch should be deep enough to allow only a small amount of the crossbar to protrude, and you may wish to carve your notches before setting up the poles. Now for the trigger stick. You will carve a large 7 shape on one end of your trigger stick using the method mentioned earlier. This will hook on to your crossbar. You will then carve a groove around the circumference of the other end of the trigger stick in which you will attach your cordage. After your trigger stick is completed, you must attach it to your spring pole. You will use a single piece of cordage that will extend from your spring pole to your trigger stick to form your sliding knot. Start by wrapping the cordage tightly three times around the spring pole and then tying a square knot like so. Right over left, left over right, and vice versa.
Leave enough cordage hanging to attach the trigger by tying a half hitch like so. Then wrapping three times. Then securing with two more half hitches. Then, measure and tie your sliding knot. There are several sliding knots that can be used, but for the purposes of this video, we will use the double overhand sliding knot. The sliding knot ties quickly and easily, and is assembled like so. Cross behind. Wrap twice. and then guide the end of your string through the wraps you've just made. Be sure not to tie it too tight as it must slide easily and will self-tighten as it is set off. The sliding knot will snare the animal and should be set slightly off the ground, tall enough to let the animal step in, and wide enough to span your entrance. Unless you are using wire, you will probably have to use some sticks to keep it open. Next, you must prevent the animal from simply walking around your trap. Use adjacent vegetation and debris to block off the surrounding area and to create a funnel into your snare. You are basically constructing a small fence on both sides of your trap. Now it is time to set the trap. Simply place your crossbar in the notches carved into your vertical poles and hook on your trigger stick. Remember to prop your sliding knot open to allow the game easy access. The main trouble you will have setting the trap is the crossbar rolling off the poles. If this occurs, you may want to carve a few flat edges into it to prevent the rolling action. Now for an overview of what your completed T-bar snare will look like. Note the natural funnel we have created into the snare, and that the trigger stick attaches to the crossbar on the side not touching the vertical poles. Here's the other side. Having the crossbar set loosely in the notches and not tied to the vertical bars makes the trap multi-directional. That way, an animal coming from either way on the trail can set off the trap. After completing your trap, you are going to want to trigger it to make sure you have constructed it properly. Be careful when testing your trap. Pieces can break or fly away violently and can cause damage to your body. And now to demonstrate. If your trap is made properly, you should be able to toss in a small object and have something like this occur. The object should be grabbed firmly by your sliding knot and left hanging from your snare pole. Please be advised that it is illegal to use primitive traps like this one unless you are in a genuine survival life and death situation. These traps have the potential to create great suffering to the animals they catch, and the death can be slow and painful. Please disassemble any traps you have made to practice with after you are done training with them, and never leave dangerous traps assembled in the wilderness. 